Hi, today we will understand what is insertion sorting and its time complexity. That means we will try to understand the upper bound or the worst case situation of this insertion sort. Before moving into the sorting technique, first we should understand what is the input of the insertion sort or any kind of a sorting in general. The input sequence is basically some sequence of numbers, sequence of n numbers. These numbers are a1, a2, a3, a4 and so on. Now these numbers are not sequence in nature. They are random in nature. Suppose 5, 4, 2, 9, 1, etc. The problem of this statement is to arrange the numbers and make the output in sequence like 1, 2, 4, 5 and 9 and so on if there are more numbers. Now how do we obtain this sequence from a random sequence? So the pretty straightforward answer is to do permutations and for these permutations do all different kind of transformations between the numbers and check until and unless the entire sequence have in ascending order or in the required descending order. Now, before going to the sorting algorithm, let us discuss some important situations. Number one, the randomness of the input numbers. That means how the input numbers are arranged among themselves. Are they partially sequenced or they totally random or they are present themselves in a situation that they are the exact opposite of the required output. That means the input sequence may be 5, 4, 1, 2, 3. So this is partial sequence. That means 1, 2, 3 are in a sequence, but 5 and 4 are not in a sequence. So whenever the arrangement will be performed, it will keep the 1, 2, 3 as it is because there is no need to change their places, but 4 and 5 will have to be compared and will be change their places according to their right locations. And thus the order or the values become sequence in nature and we get the desired output. Now, for some cases, we need the output as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the input sequence are exactly given the opposite. This is where we need to understand how and how much the randomness of the elements depends and this also helps to understand the complexity of the algorithm. Next important situation is whether all values are distinct. Number three, size of the data set. And this is one of the very important factor that actually determines the overall time complexity and guaranteed performance of the algorithm. Now these are the four important factors that determine the quality of the algorithm. And what does we mean by the quality of the algorithm? Their complexity, that whether the algorithm is running on n square or log n or n log n or n log square n, whatever. So, let us understand the philosophy of the insertion sort. How does the insertion sort works? So insertion sort works like the way we actually shuffle our card and arrange our cards, sort our cards in our hand. Now let us say, take the example of 12. Now here we have set of five cards starting with the number 6, 10, 24, 36 and 12. Now we pick up 12 and we want to insert the 12 at its proper position. 
So what we do, we try to identify the position of the 12 and we scan each and every item until we get the appropriate location of the 12 and we put that 12 in that particular location and thus this way the sorting works and finally we have the sorted cards in our hand. Now since you have understand the philosophy of the insertion sort, let us look deep into the algorithm of the insertion sort and here we will see a quick short dry run of this algorithm to make yourself better understanding of how this works in case of an unsorted data. Now to demonstrate the working of this insertion sort algorithm, we have taken an example of four random sequence of number and the sequence of numbers are 3, 1, 5, 2. These values are present inside the array and their indexes for the sake of this algorithm I have started from 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So here total number of elements present in this array are 4 that is why I have taken n is equals to 4. Now why I took the index 1 not started from 0 because in general array always starts from 0. Now since this algorithm starts from 2 thus I have taken the index started from 1 otherwise I will not be able to complete or perform the correct analysis of the algorithm. Now if you want your algorithm to start from the index 0 then you have to make a little changes to this algorithm and I guess you will be able to understand where should be the changes after I complete describing the principle of the algorithm with this set of examples. Now here j starts from the value 2 and it continue till the value 4, 2 to 4. Now inside the for loop j we will assign the value key is equals to a of j. a of j means the value of j is 2. So a of index 2 is the value 1. So here the key will be value 1 which is a of 2. Next the value i, i is equals to j minus 1. Now j is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. So value of i is 1. Now again in the next statement we have a while statement. Now this is basically to perform certain comparisons and to check whoever is larger than the later one or the earlier one. Now here before going inside the while loop there are two preconditions of the while loop. The first precondition is i should be greater than 0 and a of i should be greater than the key value. So let us check what is the conditions of the precondition. So here i is 1, 1 is greater than 0 so it is correct and next a of i, a of i is a of 1 a of 1 is the value 3. So 3 greater than the key value 1. Yes, this condition also holds. So we will move inside the while loop and inside the while loop what happens? They are present some initialization. So changing of the values of the array indexes. So here I am changing the array i plus 1 with the value of array i. So what is the value of i? i is 1. So 1 plus 1 becomes 2 and a of i means a of 1. What is the value of a of 1? The value of a of 1 is 3. So basically the idea is to change the value from this location to this location. Now in A of 2, the earlier 1 has been replaced with the current value 3. So where does the 1 go? Wait, don't worry, we'll come to that. Here 1 has already been back up 
inside the variable called key so the value 1 has not been lost yet now what happens the value of i decreases now here i decreases by 1 current value of i is 1 and minus 1 makes the value of i 0 so here once it reaches the last statement of the while loop again it reports back to the while loop and checks whether re-execution of the while loop please understand re-execution of the while loop whether it is possible or not now here the condition is i should be greater than 0 now currently the i has been changed to 0 so 0 greater than 0 does not work they are equal they are not greater than to each other so this does not work the entire while loop for terminates because they are connected via and thus it will come out of the while loop and in the next statement what happens e of i plus 1 is equals to key so what is i plus 1 do not confuse with the previous i plus 1 why i am not telling you to confuse because currently the i has been updated to 0 so here the i plus 1 will have the value 0 plus 1 is equals to key and 0 plus 1 means simply a of 1 is equals to key and key is 1 that means I have changed now the value of the array index 1 with value 1 so now see the value 1 and 3 they themselves are become sorted isn't it the beauty of the insertion sort algorithm? Now, the value of j was started with 2. Now, it will be incremented to 3. Until it, is, it reaches n, it will go on for checking all the sequence of numbers. Now, the value of j is 3. j is pointed over here i is 1 minus j so here the i will point and what will be the key key is basically the value at index j so this is key okay so let us check for the value 5 so I have removed all the previous calculations and also I have updated the value of key and the value of i. Now let us again check for the while loop i is 2 greater than 0 and a of i that means a of 2. What is a of 2? The value inside the index 2 is 3. So 3 is greater than key. What is the value of key? 5. So these conditions does not hold correctly. So here the condition terminates. Since the condition terminates, so what we do according to the algorithm, we come out of the while loop and directly execute the last statement a of i plus 1 is equals to key. So what is i? i is basically the value that we have right now to plus 1 is equals to key so a of 3 is equals to key key is 5 so inside a of 3 that means the third index of the array a I am replacing the previous value so here the previous value was 5 and I am keeping the same value over here so it does not make any changes okay so this while loop ends and it again report back to the for loop and the for loop changes the value of j to 4. Now I am at the last nth index, last index. So here let me change all the variables i, j and key. Now after cleaning up, uh, let us initialize the value of j, i and key. So here the j is pointing the very last element right now i will be pointing just the previous element of j so the index number 3 
and j is at index number 4 and key is the value of j. So this is the key. So i is equals to 3 and key is equals to 2. Now let us move inside the while loop. So while i which is 3 greater than 0 holds correctly and a of i that means a of 3 greater than 2 the value of 3 is 2 sorry sorry I am extremely sorry the value of a of 3 is 5 and it is indeed greater than 2 thus both the condition holds and we are moving inside the while loop. So in the while loop, the first thing that it will does, it will initialize the variable a of i plus 1. i is 3, 3 plus 1 becomes 4, so a of 4 with the value of a of 3. So what is the value of a of 3? It is 5, just the previous value. So again, the task is to assign the 5 into the next position. So here it becomes 5. Thus, I am changing the current value of index number 4 with the value 5. And where does the value 2 gone? It's gone nowhere. It is kept inside a variable called key. Next, i has been decremented. Thus, i has been decreased from 3 to 2. Loop ends, but it will try to re-execute the while loop. But before re-executing, it will be checked with the new data of i. So right now the value of i changes to 2. Value of a of i becomes a of 2. So a of 2 is 3. So 3 is again greater than key. Key is 2. The value of key does not change. So key becomes 2. So 3 is greater than 2. Now since 3 is greater than 2, again a of i plus 1, here i is 2, i plus 1 is 3, with value of a of 2, that means here 3 will be shifted to the location where the first 5 is there. So, changing this value with value 3. Okay. So, i has been again has been changed to 3 to 2 and 2 to 1. i has been decremented to 1. Again the loop will try to execute with the new value of i. Now 1 is also greater than 0. Now what will be the new value of a of i? That is a of 1 and the value inside a of 1 is 1. So 1 is not greater than 2 which is key. Because I need to check this, right? And currently the a of i is 1 and the key is 2. So 1 greater than 2, it is not correct. Thus, we are breaking out of the while loop and we are reporting back to the a of i plus 1 is equals to key. So what is the current i right now? The current i is 1. So 1 plus 1 is equals to 2. The value of key is 2. So a of 2 is equals to 2. Thus, I am changing the value of 3 with the value 2. This is how the entire insertion sort algorithm works. So, as we see in the philosophy, where we picked up the, variable, the value 12, and we put the value 12 of, of my card into its proper positions. Like the same way, the value 2 has been picked up from the last position and stored inside the key. And then it was compared with each and every sequence of the numbers. And accordingly, the larger number were shifted to the next positions and 2 has been placed in its correct position finally. So this is how the insertion sort algorithm works 
and now we will discuss how the insertion sort algorithm completes it total execution and what will be the worst case situation now here we will try to understand the cost and the number of times the loop will be executed so starting with the very first statement for let us say the cost is c1 and this cost is nothing but some constant and the main uh, idea is to understand the number of times the loop will be executed and it will help to execute the inner statement of the loops now here the loop execute n times now inside the loop execute n minus 1 time because the loop actually execute it in its time and then breaks out of the loop because the for loop it checks whether i am allowed to enter into the loop or not depending on the condition and the condition where it fails it also checks so it checks for n times and the inner portion perform its calculation for n minus 1 times now here this cost is written zero because this is just a single statement this statement is some written words or we can say that comments inside any c programs that it cost does not count so it constant has been marked as zero so that zero into n minus 1 makes the number of times execution of this commenting also uh, useless now next i will be executed n minus 1 times now the for loop here the for loop depends on the value of i and the index of i the value at index of i if it is greater than k or not so it may happens that i execute j minus 1th time or i may not execute at all or may execute at least once we never know so since i depends on the value of j so we marked is marked it as t of j so the time for this while loop execution let us say is t of j and this t of j will be executed for how many times for 2 to n thus taking the summations of this inner while loop which depends on the outer for loop and it will be executed till t of j plus all the single executions of the for loop as well thus summation of j equals to 2 2n into tn next the inner for loop will be executed t minus 1 times i will be executed t minus 1 times and the last statement c8 will be executed in minus 1 because this last statement is not depend on the while loop okay so now what we do we multiply each cost and times and we do the summation and the formula will becomes like t of n is equals to c1 into n plus c2 into n minus 1 plus c0 it does not make any sense so c4 into n minus 1 and similarly it does the addition of all the sequence and by simplifying all the things we will get certain now we check for the best case analysis now for a best case analysis what happens the array is already sorted so it means that the while loop will never execute what does that mean that value of key key is a of j right remember key is a of j so a of j comes later a of i comes earlier because we have already seen that i 
is j minus 1 if this is 3 1 5 2 or if I say it is arranged then if j is this one then I will be j minus 1 thus a of i which is 1 is never greater than a of j and this continues for all the different pairs 1 not greater than 2, 2 not greater than 3, 3 not greater than 5. Right? So the while loop never executes. So since the while loop never executes, we can simply discard all the inner while loop. Thus, we only consider the C of 1, C of 2, C of 4 and C of 8. And we also consider C of 5. Why? because c of 5 allows the while loop each and every time at least to do one check so while loop is comparing at least once so at least once means the comparison depends on the number of times the for loop j will allow the while loop to execute so while loop also depends on for loop so the for loop will let the while loop executes for n minus one times that is why C of 5 is n minus 1. Thus, simplifying all the statements and n and constant term has been segregated. Thus, n is the only largest variable. So, the complexity in best case is big O of n for insertion sort. Now, for worst case analysis, what happens? The while loop not only execute for one time, but for each and every time the while loop is getting true. That means, suppose I want to sort this element. And I want to take the value 1 and I want to put comparing value 1 with 2, then 3, then 5 and finally what the algorithm will do algorithm will shift each and every values to their corresponding location so 2 will be shifted 3 will be shifted 5 will be shifted and finally 1 will be kept inside the position where earlier 5 was there so there are these different comparisons happened inside the while loop and again it will go on for 2 the 3 will be shifted 5 will be shifted and then 2 will take part over here and again similarly for 3 5 will be shifted then 3 will come into this place and finally they will be sorted to do this it makes sense that while loop will be executed at most number of times. Thus, for n number of elements, the while loop will be executed n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Now, taking minus 1 and finally, for j minus 1, we have this simplifications. Thus putting the values into the corresponding summation of tj, we have these forms. And since we can see that there is a multiplicative form of n into n, thus it will finally leads to a n square plus b n plus c. n square being the highest term, so I can confirm that the worst case for this insertion sort is big O of n square. Now this is all about the insertion sort and its time complexity analysis. If you have any questions, please write in the comment and I would be very happy to make your query solved as much as quickly possible.